Hey everyone, welcome in to another week right here on Next Round Preps. John Lunsford, Jerry Young here with you. And Jerry, we are heading into non-region play coming up this week. A little break as we, uh, you know, basically are halfway through region play with a lot of teams. Some are three in, some are four in, some are only two in, depending on uh, if you're in a seventeen region or not. But uh, a lot of fun games we'll talk about here last week, but a lot of good matchups coming up this week as well. I'm telling you, this is one of my favorite weeks because – you know, not necessarily rivalry games, but there's some matchups, 4A, 5A matchups playing out of a different region where you got the top teams in each region playing in week five. I think that's great. With a lot of these teams taking that final week off now, basically giving you a buffer between your last region game and the playoffs, um, you know, because whether they do it on purpose or not, a lot of times those last region games are kind of region championship games for some teams. Those end of season rivalries have been moved to this week. You do have a lot of really tough games right here, and it's a good test for a lot of people. But before we get into next week's games, let's talk about last week's games. Week four officially in the season, um, the fifth week of the season. So a lot of these teams, as we talk about next week, they'll be five and zero, four and one, you know, three and two records like that. But uh, this is the third official week of region play for most teams, and we'll start with some of the smaller classification games. Actually, a non-region game, Hanley at Central Clay County. Uh, Central Clay getting the big win, thirty-one to six. There, um, thought it might be a little closer game than that one. Yeah, you know, I talked to my friend Tommy Wood, who is a big Central Clay County fan, and he said that place was packed. I, bet. I, I mean, he said you couldn't squeeze another one in there, and it was loud. And it obviously helped as they beat them, uh, what was it, 31-6. to six. So, you know, good job for uh, Central Clay County. How about this one, Bayside Academy? We've talked about Bayside all year with, uh, yeah. you know, Barrett Trotter being the head coach there. They went to Jackson, and Jackson, they took it to them. Legion Field in Jackson, Alabama on a Friday night. I've said this for years. There's just not much better place in Alabama that's atm- atmosphere-wise than Legion Field in Jackson. And they got a good football team. John, obviously, you know, um, Bayside Academy's gone 4-0, and 5 if we have 4-0 to start the season, and then lose 35 to nothing. That was kind of a shocker. But that just shows you the talent in Jackson this year. UMS Wright, meanwhile, since we stay in South Alabama, they also lost a big one to Viger. Yeah, I'm surprised that – that they are, you know, the record that they have right now, you know, this late in the season. But, you know, UMS Wright is a team that that is going to be there at the end of the year. I mean, they're just a, you know, if you, there are teams in Alabama that we sit down the start of every year and you can pencil in who's going to be in the playoffs. UMS Wright's one of those. Now, I said that for years we've always penciled in Hoover and look at where (laughs) we're standing now. But, uh, yeah, but I'm surprised – that they lost that bad to Viger, 31-9. to nine. Of course, the difference with UMS Wright, and we'll throw St. Paul's in there too, both of those teams moving up because of competitive balance. Remember a few years back, the AHSAA added in the competitive balance rule, which means basically based on your playoff success, you get a certain amount of points, and based on the points, you may move up or uh, back to back down in classification. Technically, a private school can work their way all the way from 1A to 7A if they keep winning. That's happening right now in one of the sports. I believe it's girls golf. There is a 3A school playing in 7A. I feel like Bayside Academy and volleyball may have done that too because they they, I, they, I feel, I, I feel yeah. they win, but um, but they're moving up because they should be like 4-3 or 4-A. But, um, yeah, UMS Wright is in that situation right now. They're 5-A. They're actually a 4-A school. They got moved up. St. Paul's got moved up from 5-A to 6-A. If I had to guess, I would assume both may drop back down next reclassification. St. Paul's has not done super in the playoffs in 6A, and they're just kind of sneaking in as a four seed. UMS Wright last year got upset by, by Charles Henderson in the quarterfinals. Mm-hmm. I think the quarterfinals is when you start accumulating points, so they only accumulated just a little bit. If they really struggle like they've been struggling this season against some of these teams, mm-hmm. I mean, another quarterfinal exit isn't a total shock maybe, and they might drop back down. Well, a lot of people may or may not know a private school can't, has to count each student 1.35 times, I think. So every every three students counts as four, basically, is the way it works. So, you know, it's already interesting. And, of course, there's, there's some rumors about some changes coming in the HSAA with private school, public school, how they're going to do it. A lot of other states, and I noticed that Georgia just yesterday, as a matter of fact, released a press release that they're going to be separating – private schools and public schools in the playoffs. I don't know if HSAA is going to go that far, but this – I mean, there's some crazy formulas to figure all this out. Yeah. When you got 3A schools playing against 7A schools in whatever sport, 
you can't have the depth. And I think one of the problems is, John, I didn't mean to go down this rabbit trail, but one of the problems is a small school may have, like in this, uh, when I said golf, women's golf, they may have one or two outstanding women golfers that year, and it pushes them up. The next year pushes them into 7A, and then they're back to 3A again. And it takes a whole lot longer to come from 7A back to 3A than it does the way the competitive balance is to jump from 3A to 7A. So I know there's some problems there. I don't know the answer to it, but I know it's one of those things, again, going to be a lot of discussion in the next few months. I feel like it really ramped up when the seven classification system really first started. Because remember, football, McGill Tulin made it to three straight state championship games. They beat Spain Park and then lost a couple to Hoover. That's a private school. Now, they have dropped down to 6A since then. But um, they were winning, and like St. Paul's was winning in 5A. UMS Wright was winning in 4A. And you have a lot of private schools in some of the smaller classifications. Really ramped up then. Kind of has backed off now because competitive balance has put – Seems like St. Paul's where they're not winning quite as much. You must right. We're talking about their two and three right now. Haven't won quite as much, but yeah, a lot of states do uh, separate them like that. I know. I think it's Louisiana. They do select and non-select. Non-select is just a public school without open enrollment. You got to live in that area, like what public schools are here. And then the select is private charter and public schools that they have open enrollment that anybody can come to, and they separate them out and they play completely different. And you have. Some teams like a, a John Curtis in Louisiana that's just absolutely killer came up and played Hoover back in the day because they were so good. But right. they're a 2A school. And I remember, th- I remember when that happened. John Curtis came up here and Joe McKnight played for him at the time, really good player. And um, they came up and I'm like, a 2A school's playing Hoover? Because this is in the Rush Probes Hoover age back right. when I was in school. And I'm like, how, how is this even a real game? Why, why do they think they can come and play Hoover? And they beat Hoover, and they played really, they played really well. And it's like, okay, that's a different story. That's, it's a different story down there because they have this select league that the private schools play in. People complain about it, and it's when a public school loses to a private school. And you've mentioned some of these in other, you know, Olympic sports maybe or dominating, um, you know, different uh, – like St. Paul's always dominates in track, I know, because right. they always competed with Homewood um, in, in track. So – it's a debate we could keep going on and on and on about, but you're seeing a little bit of it in football take place with the competitive balance rule with teams like UMS right in St. Right. Paul's. And a lot of people have misconceptions that private schools go out and recruit. That's because kids come there from other, you know, parts of the city and go there and they say, well, they're recruiting them. There's not private schools don't recruit. There may be uh, parents that have the wherewithal to afford that private school and want to put their good athlete into that private school, maybe because they think, well, that coach is, is better or whatever, whatever the reason may be. But to say that the school went out there and recruited that kid or whatever from the other side of town, that doesn't happen. I know that's a – everybody's going to say, oh, yeah, it does, yeah, it does. <laughs> I was about but, to say, they're going to say that happens for every school, no, pri- it, private or not. <laughs> if you knew what they had to go through to get um, eligibility through the HSAA for each student, I mean – you know, I'm not saying that one every now and then doesn't slip through the cracks, but but uh, no, it's not that way. To save from getting into a hole, but uh, but no, I've seen it. That's right. We'll move on. That's, right. um, <laughs> but that's a debate for another day. That's right. Uh, moving on. All right, Lincoln, big uh, win for Moody over Lincoln, 28 to three. There, as the uh, Blue Devils look to continue their run there in that region, maybe win a region title. I imagine Moody leads with the top two teams there. Scottsboro, they beat Arab 28 to 14. A little bit of a surprise here. Low scoring game. Spanish Fort beat Theodore eight to three. It's an interesting score there, but uh, the Toros getting the win there. Theodore. They're one of those that's moved down from 7A, not a public-private thing. They've just moved down from 7A right. and uh, were really good last year, beat Sarah Lynn last year uh, to win that region, but don't know if they're going to be able to do that this year as they lost to Spanish Fort 8-3. to three. Um, Parker, all over Gardendale. How about Gardendale? Hadn't won a game yet this season. And how about the Thunder and Herd? They're undefeated. Looking good. Looking yeah, good. they're 5-0. and oh. Yeah, and what about Gardendale? Man, I love their facilities. I love going to Gardendale. I like the way the end zone is. I like everything about that setup. So, but anyway, that has nothing to do with the football thing. <laughs> but no, but, I mean it's been a, it's been tough sledding for Gardendale here to has. start things off. And, and I mean, look, they're uh, they've had a tough schedule. They're in a, a decently tough region there with Mountain Brook and Parker. Um, uh, but Parker Parker's got a chance to win that region, even over Mountain Brook, as good as they've looked this year. Um, they win big 41-22 on the road. McAdory, maybe Central Tuscaloosa, kind of bringing Central back down to earth a little bit. Um, Central was looking pretty good so far this season, but McAdory showing they're still a force to be reckoned with. In that region, 42-14, McAdory wins that one. Homewood, uh, kind of on the rebound. They've won two in a row now. They beat Ben Russell 41-21 in that game. 
game uh, down in Alexander City. Helena, they beat Pelham in a rivalry game. Two teams, uh, not really cross-town rivals, but essentially that because Helena split off from Pelham. Right. Uh, but Helena wins 35-14. I do think Helena will end up winning that region. They are same region as Homewood and Ben Russell. Uh, Gadsden City, they fought a Hartzell close game there. Hartzell wins 31-28. to uh, Pinson Valley, big loss to Oxford, 40-6. to How about that? Yeah, and how about Oxford? 5-0, and uh, I've done some notes on this. Listen to this. This is again. This is Oxford now against their teams. Against McAdory, they scored 33. Against Huntsville, 35. Shades Valley, 42. We know Shades Valley is better. Huffman, 52, and now Pinson Valley, 40. They're not just winning games 17 to 14 or no. 21 to 7. Man, they're blowing everybody out. The closest game they've had is McAdory at 33-23, a 10-point game. So. I tell you, Oxford, they've got a whole new attitude, a whole new feeling over there with these new facilities. Um, and so I think Oxford's going to be a force to reckon with again. You know, we go back two or three years ago, Thompson went and, and played Oxford, and it was 55 nothing, I think, and it was just not a contest. And I thought then, man, Oxford's going to have a tough time coming back, but no way. Coach Franklin's doing a great job. He is, and uh, that Oxford Clay Chalville game is going to look pretty good here in a few weeks as well. Clay Chalville, meanwhile, beating I said center Franklin, point. I mean Adams. Yeah. Before I get up, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sam right. Adams. Sam Adams. <laughs> um, Clay Chalville, they beat a center point 39 14. Center point trying to be a playoff team. That may be your four playoff team. It probably is. Clay Chalville, center point, Oxford, Pinson Valley, but Clay and Oxford definitely separating themselves from the pack right there. Opelika, they beat Prattville. Prattville won on the road. We talked about this as a must win for both teams. Opelika wins 38 uh, 13. Prattville in tough shape right now. Opelika looking in decent shape to make the playoffs, but Prattville, they're, they're struggling right now. Yeah, they are. And the Lions, they're not only struggling right now, they're going to struggle the rest of the year. They still haven't played uh, uh, Central Phoenix City. They still haven't played Auburn. Did they play Enterprise? I think they did. I, I can't yeah, I remember. Don't remember. But anyway, they got two or three more really tough teams on their schedule. And there they're sitting where they are now. It's going to be a long haul. Yeah, one and three overall, one and two in region play. Now, Opelika, though, looking okay. These are the two teams that just missed the playoffs last year in region two. Baker, they beat Daphne 33-20. Baker, the uh, top team right now down in region one. Tuscaloosa County, Oak Mountain, close game here. County won by one, 24-23. So, County kind of sort of keeping themselves in that conversation. They did this last year, right. but were proven to not necessarily be a top four team. But technically, as of right now, I went through did some bracketology this weekend just kind of getting a view at the midseason break county is the four seed right now technically just strictly based on records i think most people expect hoover to beat them when they play uh here soon but it's thompson and hewitt tied at the top at un unbeaten then vestavia is sitting there as you know pretty much the easy number three and then but vestavia still has to play hewitt and then county is number three so they got this win over Oak mountain i don't expect them to or county's at four excuse me i don't expect them to be there at the end of the season but but right now they're sitting there All right, listen how many Six weeks ago, if I'd have made this statement, you'd have knocked me off the stool, okay? I think it's going to come down the fourth seed, Hoover, and Tuscaloosa County. Well, I, it pretty much is. I mean, yeah, because right. O'Bound's out of it, Spain Park pretty much out of it, um, and Chelsea – could technically hang around. They do have a region win, but um, it was against Oak Mountain, and so I kind of would write them out of it. But you're right. It is technically yeah. going to come down to that game. Now, yeah. look, I fully expect Hoover to, to win that still, yeah, I did but too. it is technically coming down to that game. Uh, meanwhile, Vestavia, they're still looking good. 28-6 winners over Spain Park. Hoover did fall to Hewitt Trustful 28-7. to So Hewitt, uh, they're setting up that game in a couple weeks against uh, – no, it's next week. Next week That's against right. Thompson. Um, that'll be a, a good one there. Thompson, they beat Chelsea 45 to nothing. It was 45 nothing at halftime, running clock at the end. We kind of got bored there in the second half <laughs> calling that game. But Thompson uh, – Second half, second quarter. Uh, second, second quarter, it's 35 nothing after the first quarter. Yeah. Literally scored three touchdowns in their first four plays. Had two pick sixes, a block punt. I mean, it was just an all-around – all right, well, we'll oh, it's That's only right. seven twenty, and the I game's over. I was looking for dad jokes to tell. I mean, it was that <laughs> bad, you know. It, uh, yeah, it, it was rough there for Chelsea, but Thompson gets the win. So Thompson Hewitt still sitting atop that region. They play next week, but this week. Thompson and Clay Chaltville, that's the big game we're looking forward to. we got a lot of big games to look forward to. We'll get to that here on the other side. But first, Jerry, tell us about uh, one of our great new sponsors. Yeah, I want to tell you about Shepherd Equipment. They have been a new sponsor this year with us. They do a great job. It's Shepherd Equipment and Disposal. They do a lot of things under one umbrella. They can uh, clear land. You know, if you got like a 20-acre track, i got a friend that uh, just is building a house down at uh, Lay Lake and uh, – 
he had just had 20 acres and he, he got like five of it cleared and so I told him and he's going to call Shepherd and get the other 15 cleared but they do that they can build you a road down to your lake if you've got property to lake on or anywhere if you want a trail built they can do that as well bush hogging land clearing they can grade a road and put slag down they also have dumpsters so if you need you're doing your own project they'll bring a dumpster sit it right in your driveway you can throw all your stuff in it they come back in a week two weeks whatever you want pick it up of course they provide commercial dumpsters as well you can reach them very easily by going to shepherd equipment s-h-e-p-h-e-r-d shepherd equipment Dot com Shepherd Equipment and Disposal. Thanks so much to Shepherd Equipment for sponsoring Next Round Preps. Also, when we get back, our Milo's Player of the Week. It's a good one this week as, uh, boy, there are some really tough teams here in the state, and this is the leader of one of the top teams, maybe the top team in the state. But we'll get to our Milo's Player of the Week, and we'll get to all the big games coming up here in non-region play when we get back right here on Next Round Preps. If you or a loved one been diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment, which is brain changes that are starting to interfere with your life? Did you know researchers have proven that these brain changes can be slowed down or reversed in many people that routinely exercise their brain? At the Karen Thrive Foundation, we specialize in helping you understand the specific areas of the brain that have changed and develop a brain health plan, including cognitive exercises, adaptive approaches, and helpful technology to proactively stay ahead of your brain wellness. Visit www.karenthrive.org for more information. We've partnered with Who Is Coffee to create the Next Round Blend, available in light, medium, and dark roast. 100% Arabica beans. Specialty coffee roasted on demand, available in whole bean or ground for drip pods. Espresso and coarse ground for French press. Go to nextround.store to get a link to pre-order today. Everyone that pre-orders will be entered to win a prize pack with coffees, shirts, hats, and tumblers. Nextround.store for the next round blend. Welcome back in here to Next Round Preps. John Lunds for Jerry Young, and we are looking forward to non-region play. This is officially week five. It is the sixth week of the season. I feel like I'm always confusing people every time I bring that up, but technically 11-week season, 10 official weeks. Uh, week five is the non-region play. It's always been this way back in the day, week one, five, and ten were non-region play. Now week zero, one, five, and ten are non-region play with a bye in there. But some teams take a bye this week. They'll decide that, you know, hey, let's take an off week. Let's get back right. healthy and everything. Some will play their harder games now as kind of a midseason test and then take a bye in uh, in week 10, and that's what a lot of big schools are doing. Before we get to that, though, I do want to get to our Milo's Player of the Week. And our Milo's Player of the Week this week is Sarah Lynn QB K.J. Lacey, a Texas commit. He is going in. I don't know if that will stick or not because he's going into a crowded quarterback room there. But, look. Everybody talks about Ryan Williams, the reigning Mr. Football, and he's only a junior this year, could easily win it again this year and easily win it again next year. But, uh, you know, and he's committed to Alabama. But K.J. Lacey, 11 of 15, 179 yards and five touchdowns. As Sarah Lynn set a school record 11th straight win, um, which is also the longest streak in Alabama right now. Uh, a lot of the talk does go around Ryan Williams, but uh, Lacey is legit. Like I said, he's going to Texas as of right now. Andalusia has the second longest win streak at 10. Leroy third with nine. Thompson is in fourth with eight. Sarah Lynn's last loss, I believe, was to Theodore last season. But um, Sarah Lynn also, by the way, the winningest 6A team in the last decade by one over Mount Brook because they beat Mount Brook in the championship last year. But uh, KJ Lacey has been responsible for all of that success, and a lot of that has to do with Sarah Lynn just kind of hitting a bunch of marks, and, and KJ Lacey is a big part of that. Um, it kind of gets overlooked because of Ryan Williams, who is his number one target. But uh, really good job by KJ Lacey, and Ryan was both down in Sarah Lynn. Um, so he is our Milo's Player of the Week. Thanks so much to Milo's for uh, helping us choose a Player of the Week every week. All right. Let's move on to this week, week, week five, uh, non-region play, like I said. So all of these games are going to be non-region and technically not count for the playoffs unless you get into one of those crazy tiebreaker situations, in which case my head's already hurting from trying to think about all of those. Yep. 
Uh, Jacksonville, number seven in Class 4A. They are heading to Ohachi. Jacksonville won this game pretty big last year. Ohachi, though, sitting at 4-1 this season, uh, which is where Jacksonville is as well. Should be a good matchup there in Class 4A. And also in 4A, number three in uh, 4A, Montgomery Catholic, unbeaten on the season. They're at Demopolis. Uh, Demopolis, not bad. They're up in 5A, but, uh, boy, Montgomery Catholic's a good team. They are. I think this is their first real test, though. I really do. Montgomery Catholic, they beat some teams, but, uh, you know, the only real team that I look at and see that they beat was McGill Tulin. They started the year off 21 nothing over them. The rest of them, BT Washington, Slocum, Geneva, not that good a team. So, you know, they're sitting undefeated 5-0, and but um, they've scored 217 points. They've only given up 18 on the season, though, so – they got a good football team. However, Demopolis's only loss was to Jackson, who we talked about just beat up on Bayside Academy. So, you know, I think this is a – I don't know where you got it. I think it's more of a 10-point ball game. Yeah, the, the numbers say Catholic big in this one. Look, Catholic has been a legit team. And we talk about pound for pound, best teams. You know, UMS right for a long time was kind of in that discussion. A smaller team but really dominant. Um, you know, you kind of start with Thompson, Sarah Lynn, Clay, Chalkville, Auburn, Central, Hewitt, those teams at the top from 6 and 7A. But, hey, Montgomery Catholic's right there, kind of like Mars Hill. And Mars Hill's moved up. They're still only 3A, but they're a legit team. But uh, Montgomery Catholic is uh, right there as well as one of the best teams in the state, regardless of classification. Speaking of Mars Hill, Russellville, 5-0, and heading to Mars Hill. Mars Hill won this one in a classic last year, 31-30. Yeah, I agree. Mars Hill, uh, once again, I did a little research on them. They've scored uh, 295 points, John. That's average. No, average 59 points per game. I mean, is, that, they can, is that good? Is that a lot of points in football? Well, yeah, that's a <laughs> lot of points. But, uh, but remember, they are in 3A, so – uh, Russellville, another f- good football team, not that bad. They've scored 208. That's 42 points a game. So, y- you know, this is going to be a high-scoring game. Last year, it's 31-30, I believe, was the score. It was a one-point game. Yep. And uh, so it's going to be a one-point game again. I really believe that. But I think instead of 31-30, I believe it's going to be like more like 42-41, 40, you know. Easily could be there. Marshall, the number one team in Class 3A. Russellville unbeaten, 5-0, and and a team that's always in competition. When I was in school, we played them every year in the state championship, and they're not ranked right now. I don't. I mean, the rankings, yeah. the the, the uh, Alabama Sports Writers Association rankings are never really uh, that great, in my opinion. Kind of shocking, Russellville sitting unbeaten, not even ranked there. Um, speaking of rankings, a top 10 matchup in Class 4A as number 8, Bibb County. We talked a lot about them. Uh, been really good this season at number 1 in Class 4A, Andalusia. Andalusia is a defending state champ. Remember yep. that, okay? So, uh, uh, yeah, Trent Taylor. Um, you know, Coach Taylor is 89 for 20 and 25. Uh, he, he'll be looking to win his 90th game here, but nobody is going to stop the Bulldogs this year. I think Andalusia is going to roll. Yeah, I got Andalusia as a, a big favorite in this one. They won 55 to 18 last year in this game over Bibb County, who still has been really, really good. Um, all right, in Mobile, Faith Academy, number 10 in Class 5A. They're at St. Paul's. We mentioned St. Paul's up in 6A due to competitive balance. Um, they are 3-1 of the season, haven't played bad. I got St. Paul's as a slight favorite in this game, but a good matchup there between two what are actually 5A teams with St. Paul's. Like I said, because their success in 5A have moved up. Uh, 6A, number four, Parker. They are unbeaten. We talked about how strong Parker is. They are at the fourth team in 5A. Pleasant Grove. Uh, Pleasant Grove been good on the season. They only have that one loss to Ramsey. But Parker, boy, Parker has been almost unstoppable this season. Another team that has kind of looked unstoppable has been Oxford. We mentioned how good Oxford is. They're number eight in Class 6A. They're traveling to number six in 6A. Hartzell, who's been really good. Hartzell dominated this game last year, though. Of course, Oxford, we already said they beat up on Pinson Valley last week. We know that. But Hartzell's only loss, remember this now, their only loss is to a 7A school, um, Austin. That's yep. who they've lost to. So, you know, I think this is going to be another close ball game. I think it's time for Oxford, if they want to, you know, stamp their foot 
print into it. I think this is their game to win or lose. It's going to be a close ball game, though. Austin, you're a region champ out of Region 4 last year in Class 7A. So, like I said, that's their only loss. I got Oxford in a very close one, but Hartsel actually won this one big last year, 69-21, but Oxford a lot better this season. Uh, Muscle Shoals, um, they are number five in Class 6A, unbeaten on the season. They are at James Clemens. Muscle Shoals won this game 38-10 to last year. James Clemens playing a little better than they were last season, but I still have Muscle Shoals winning by about a touchdown in that one. Homewood and Pinson Valley, two teams that uh, you would not have guessed would have been two and three and one and three coming into this game, but Homewood traveling to Pinson Valley. P- Homewood just cannot beat Pinson Valley for whatever reason. Um, I don't know that it changes this week, but these are two teams with questionable records. I think it does change this week, and the reason why I think the momentum after beating Ben Russell, I think that's a that was a big ball game. I mean, you just don't go down there to Alexander City and win like they did unless you got a good football team now. Homewood started out a little slow. We both know that. But I think this is a, a game that Homewood's going to take down. I was interested. It's a tough place to play. I have played on that field before for Homewood. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I am leaning Pinson Valley in this one. But Homewood has been able to put some points on the board the last couple of weeks, albeit against Calera and Ben Russell. But uh, we'll see what happens in that one between the Patriots and Indians. Gadsden City, they're 3-2. and two. Gave uh, Hewitt Trustful a little bit of a scare early on in the season. They traveled to Hillcrest, Tuscaloosa, who's unbeaten number three in uh, 6A behind Clay and Saraland. Um, Hillcrest, legit. They won 45-19 last year. I expect a similar result this year. More Jordan's been kind of a surprise this year. Four and one of the season. Their only loss is to Parker. Um, they are uh, hosting Coleman, who's three and two right now. I got Mortimer Jordan winning that one pretty big. Also, Opelika. Uh, we talked about them. You know, maybe being that playoff, that fourth playoff team, uh, if they can sneak in there in Region Two. They are at Theodore, who was a seven A Region One team. Now they are a six A Region One team. They're technically number ten in six A. I imagine that to change this week. I imagine Opelika will go down to Theodore and beat Theodore and uh, try to flex their muscles as a strong seven. A Region 2 team. Saraland, the number one team in Class 6A, they host Foley. Foley 2-2 two two on the season, 0-2 in Region play. Kind of a struggle for Foley. Surprise, yeah. you get Saraland now. Yeah, and one thing I'll say about Foley, uh, you know, to throw a positive spin on it, they have the best field of anybody in Alabama. <laughs> Their grass, I mean, every time I step foot on it, I just want to take that pitching wedge and just see how big of a hunk. It is just like walking on <laughs> On a, on a golf green. But. Sounds like somebody else I know saying, man, but their hot dogs are really good down yeah, there. That's um, right. <laughs> in Class 7A, this actually is a 7A versus 7A matchup, one of the few that we have. Baker, number nine in Class 7A, currently in first place in Region 1. They're 5-0 and on the season, 3-0 and in Region Play. They host Dothan, who's number seven in Class 7A. Dothan 4-1, looking pretty good. Got an upset win uh, in, in, in there. And, you know, the, Dothan is a team that – maybe can even work their way into a top two seed who knows but I'm a uh, fan this year i'm telling you that's gonna be a great ball game I, you uh yeah your your little formula says dothan by uh by 11 yeah yeah i agree yeah i mean I Do- dothan's dothan's are good this year uh we'll see what they can do when they get back into region play austin three and two uh, i mentioned they won the region last year in region four not quite as good this year but they travel to gardendale a gardendale team that has yet to win a football game it is Shocking to say that, but Gardendale can win here. I do have Austin favored by a little bit, but uh, yeah, I think Austin's going to take it. Boy, if Gardendale gets back into uh, region play and they're sitting at zero and five, that'll be a shock. Auburn, we talked about how good they are. They are number three in Class Seven A. They are traveling to Birmingham to take on Ramsey. Four and one Auburn is Ramsey, number one in Class Five A. They're four and one. Uh, they're only lost stepping up to six A. Now they step up to seven A. Does Ramsey have a shot here? They got a shot. You know, Auburn lost by one point to Enterprise. Yep. And then double overtime against Dothan that we just talked about. So, yep. Auburn's struggling a little bit this year, even though their record's still 4-1. and one. Yeah, Ramsey can win this game. I, I watched them play last week. I'm going to tell you what, Rams a good football team. They are a good football team, but two classifications down. But uh, that that actually may be, in my mind, the second-best matchup uh, behind Thompson and Clay Chalkville just because of how good both the teams mm-hmm. typically are. Uh, but Ramsey looking to make another run towards a Super 7. Oak Mountain, they are at Briarwood. Briarwood has kind of sort of righted the ship, winning the last two after starting off pretty slow. Oak Mountain just cannot get it going. They're 1-4, 0-3 in, in region play. I think Briarwood has a chance to actually move it to a winning record here with uh, Oak Mountain coming to town. Yeah, I say I coming to so. town, it's five minutes down the road. Right, but. well, yeah, they can walk between each one. But, yeah, I think Briarwoods has righted the ship. I think Coach Forrester's done a great job. 
another tough uh, start, just like Homewood. You know, they're yeah. a better football team than they started. But I don't think Oak Mountain, even at 7A, is going to give them much of a game. Yeah, Oak Mountain struggling this season. Then uh, what, you know, strictly on name brand, you would think would be the top two matchups in the state. One would be Mountain Brook, who is number seven in Class 6A. They lost pretty bad to Vestavia to start things off, but have uh, been undefeated since. They are at Hoover, who still, it's shocking to say, is one and four in uh, overall and one and two in region play. The little formula does favor Hoover in this one because it is a 7A school with tougher competition. Mm -hmm. Mountain Brook hadn't looked super this year, but – I, I'd still am leaning Mountain Brook's way. You know, if you put Mountain Brook, Sarah Land, Clay Chalkville, to me, those are all 7A teams. So when you say that Hoover's moving down, technically they are. But these, are, these teams are as good uh, or better than a lot of the 7A teams that are in 7A. So, yeah, I know Mountain Brook uh, would love to beat Hoover. I mean, that's been what they've been working for. They've been beat so many years in a row. I think the Spartans might have what it takes this year. And Hoover's obviously, you know, been the, the top program in the state for the last, you know, couple decades. But a close game last year, 26-14, Hoover did win that one. They hold the 36-7 edge in the series. Um, so uh, Mountain Brook, I know, would love to get a win here, a uh, team they've played pretty much every year of their existence. The game will be on the call for Battle of Unbeatens. 7A number one Thompson hosting 6A number two Clay Chaltville. It's the second year in a row the game has been hosted at Thompson, but uh, Thompson and Clay have worked out a deal to not make it a home and home, so Thompson can host both of them. The game will be on ESPN. Two, right? ESPN two. ESPN two. But uh, of course, you know we would implore you to listen to the Warrior Nation Network and watch us on the NFHS Network with that. But Thompson. I mean, this game came down to the wire last year, 17-14. Had to get a goal line stand. Clay had some kicking problems. They went for it on fourth down instead of kicking a field goal that would have tied it. Um, I mean, Clay had every chance in the world to win this game last year. Do they have chances to win it this year? Absolutely, and they got a kicker this year too. So that would be a difference. But, yes, they do. Coach Gilmer, you know, just like I said a few minutes ago, they're a 6A school, but they're really, you know, play on the level of a 7A school. Yeah, they got a definite shot to win. Thompson's going to have to play their best ball game of the year, in my opinion, uh, up until this point. Of course, up until now, it was Thompson over Vestavia. That was the game they really had to work on. But I'm impressed with with the numbers that Clay Chalkwell's put up. Uh, the lowest points they scored was against Hueytown. Of all people, they beat them 17-3. to I thought that was a shocker. Everybody else, they're in the high 30s, low 40s in scoring. So, Thompson's defense is a different animal, though. They're very good. And Thompson's offense with Trent Seaborn and, you know, the, the receiving core that Thompson has got and then the one-two punch of A.J. Green and Michael Dujon in the backfield. I think the question is, can Clay Chalkville hang some points against Thompson's defense? You always got to know that Thompson's going to score a lot of points. But can Clay Chalkville basically outscore him? I don't know. We'll see. Thompson's offense at this point last year struggling a little bit, trying to figure out its identity at quarterback. Uh, it's before Trent was the starter, scored 17 here, 16 against uh, Hewitt Trustville. But I will say, for anybody that wants to, you know, watch this game and does want to see, not to pump up Clay Chalvo because we work for Thompson, but right. uh, this is the 24-7 rankings. Jalen and Bakwe was everything last year. Number four, five-star guy going to Alabama. Uh, Jaquan McCroy going to Oregon, four-star offensive tackle. Uh, you get down a little further, Mario Craver, four-star wide receiver, hadn't committed yet, probably going to Florida. I just keep on going down. Clay Chalva has a lot of these guys on this list right here on the uh, old 24-7 ranking. So yep. there's a reason that this is a game that's on national television. There's a reason that uh, – I, lo I love the fact that they're playing each other. Clay, they got upset in the playoffs last year, but, you know, easily are a team you can say can win a state championship any given year. Obviously, Thompson is that way too, winning the last four in Class 7A, but – this should be a good one. I can't wait for this one. Of course, you can watch it all on the Warrior Nation Network. Well, yeah, uh, actually, I think ESPN. Or sorry, you contract, can't watch it. You can, you can listen, it listen to it on the Warrior Nation Network. Listen to it WarriorNationNetwork dot org. Click the listen button so you can listen to John and I on the call and watch it on ESPN. But it will be. We are doing the full 
uh, TV production, but it'll be on delay basis. I should I'd so in the habit of saying right. watch it on the Warrior Nation well, Network, ESPN but yeah, want, typically ESPN taking it away. Competition, and be honest with you, the Warrior Nation Network's some competition. Yeah, hey, just listen <laughs> to us instead. Don't just watch it on ESPN, but listen to us instead. You can do that right here. Just pull it up, WarriorNationNetwork.org. You can listen to our audio stream every single week as we call the games. But it should be a really, really good game between Clay and uh, Clay and Thompson. It's gonna be on Thursday night too. So uh, make sure to tune in Thursday. Friday we actually get to watch some games on Friday right. um, but yeah it's a Thursday night game between Clay and Thompson all right should be a good slate of uh, football games like like Jerry mentioned we'll be on the call for uh, Thompson and Clay Chalkville but a lot of really good ones we just mentioned and we'll have all the recaps and start that process looking forward to the playoffs next week as region play kicks back up right here on next round preps